broadcasting live from Caraga State University, Kabad Baran City. This is Book 3 of BSC 1 Block A. Good morning, Philippines. Good morning, Caraga Region. This is Aldi Somalino, your news anchor. Today, we are going to report to you about critical evaluation and promotion. And here's Mimosa Villarin for the details. Thank you, Zaldi. So, hi everyone. So, I am Mimosa Villarin and I will be talking about the critical evaluation and promotion of local and oral history. So according to Paulo Coelho, culture makes people understand each other better and if they understand each other better in their soul, it is easier to overcome the economic and political barriers. But first, they have to understand that their neighbor is in the end just like them with the same problems, the same questions. So before I start talking about the critical evaluation and promotion of Philippine history. Let me first introduce to you the things that Philippine history is known for. So, as you can see in the first picture, we have here Bayanihan. Bayanihan literally means being in a bayan and it refers to a fundamental aspect of Filipino culture working together as a community to achieve a common goal. There we have here a picture of Pagmamano. Pagmamano is an honoring gesture used in Filipino culture. Another one, we have your picture of Kalasa. Kalasa is a two-wheeled horse-drawn carriage used in the Philippines. It was a primary mode of public and private transportation during the colonial era of the Philippines, though in modern times, they are largely only survived as tourist attractions. The picture we have here, um, a picture of jeepney. Jeepney is the most popular means of public transportation ubiqu ubiquitous in the Philippines. So another one, we have a picture of Songka. Songka is a game of skill and calculation played commonly by women and children. So lastly, we have Luxong Tinik. So it is so popular game in the Philippines, right? So we have um, Luxong Tinik. Um, it is re originated in Cabanatuan, Nueva Ecija, played by two teams with equal numbers of players. The game involves players sitting on the ground and other players jumping over parts of their body. Since I am done introducing to you the things we're in Filipino history is known for. So in the next slide, I'm gonna tackle about the local and oral history. According to Henry F. Ponteca, what is generally considered to be the history of the Filipino people is essentially the history of Central Luzon, most especially the Tagalogs. Important events and developments including personages, particularly in the Visayas and Mindanao, are at best mentioned in passing and at worst altogether left out. What is local history? So according to Oxford Dictionary, local history is a written history focusing on a particular town, district, or other limited area. However, according to Local History 2018, local history is the study of history in a geographically local context and it often concentrates on the local community. It incorporates cultural and social aspects of history. It is often documented by local historical societies or groups that form to preserve a local historic site which are compiled by amateur historians and archivists employed by various organizations. So local history also tends to be 
less documented than other types. Many local histories are recorded as oral tales or stories, um, such like artifacts of local history which are often collected in local history museums which may be housed in a historic house or other building. But wherein also um, individual historic sites are inherently local, although they may have national and world history importance as well. So since we're done with local history, so let's move on to oral history. So what is oral history? According to Collins, oral history consists of spoken memories, stories, and songs, and the study of these as a way of communicating and discovering information about the past. Oral history is the collection and study of historical information about individuals, families, important events, or everyday life using audio tapes, video tapes, or transcriptions of planned interviews. It strives to obtain information from different perspectives and most of these can cannot be found in written sources. So another slide we have here, why study local history? So local history is very important for it provides the student with increased interest in the larger subjects of history. The students advances from memorizing names, dates and places to the desire of knowing what was being said about people, places, or events. It gives the student a better sense of realism. We have to remember that our local communities, fami familiar buildings, and the land itself are limited on exhaustible resources. Hence, the study of this might encourage us preservation and will make us aware of our own links to the past so it is very important to study the local history here according to Stalit 2016 we need to study local history because all history is local it helps you understand ancestors in context and it helps you shape who you are so that's the main um, importance of studying local history according to Stalin 2016. Why did Stali states that all history is local and that we need to really study local history? Because um, according to him, when the late Tip O'Neill, former speaker of the United States House of Representatives said that all politics are local. He essentially was stating that no matter the political issue, be it budget adjust adjustments or education reform, all politics ultimately come back to an individual person. In the end, the results of all political choices are felt in communities, neighborhoods, and the lives of individual families. According to Amy Johnson Crew, it's not just all politics are local according to her. Really, all history is local. So, so the following slides and I will be talking about the importance of local history in Philippine history according to Henry F. Pontica. So according to him, it should be borne in mind that the nation is made up of its parts. These parts are the regions provinces, cities, and municipalities, and the nation's history must be the sum total of the histories of its parts. No town or province exists independently of the nation and vice versa. So, hindi talaga yan, um, wala talagang mag-exist na siya lang talaga, hindi isa, because no town or province exists independently of the nation. So, Second, why is, why is it that local history is important? Local history is important in Philippine history is that it is the interpretative recreation of the past of their locality, embracing its political, social, economic, and cultural role. This includes the 
in the development of the institutions in the geographical unit and the successes and failures of its people. According to him, it is the basic obligation of every locality to provide a proper and an adequate account of the historical experience of its own people to enrich national history and will correct the impression that Philippine history is mainly the history of Manila and its surrounding area. So the next topic we have here the history of the Muslim in the Philippines. According to Hanbal Barra, so Philippines has two lines of historical development. So first we have the Muslim line of historical development wherein older it refers to older and came to be developed in Mindanao and Sulu. Second line we have the Hispani Hispanized Filipinos line of historical development. This is the product great historical experiences of the Filipino people under Western rule. So roads. So we need to dig deeper on the history of the Muslim in the Philippines. So we need to tackle about the roots of it. So Mindanao and Sulu are the original homeland of Philippine Muslims. It has a total land area of 102,000 square meters and is a fertile region and known to be rich in agricultural plantations. So grabe gani sila ka um, tining Mindanao ug Sulu katambok o ug kanang yuta and marine and they are also in rich a rich of um, marine and mineral resources and the main concentration of the philippine muslim popul population is confined largely to the western side of mindanao down to the sulu archipelago so the next topic we have here the muslim ethnic groups so we have um, how many we have the Maranao, the Maguindanao, the Iranun, the Tausug, the Yakan, the Mulbog, the Palawan, the Kulibugan, the Kaagan, the Sangil, and the Sama. So, first, let's talk about the Maranao. So, Maranao means people of the lake. And their homeland is called Lanao, which means lake. So, Maranao society is a closed society. This is the only place in the Philippines whose lifestyle is not affected with the Western trend. So second, we have here the Maguindanao. So originally, Maguindanao is the name of the family or dynasty which came to rule of almost the whole island of Mindanao, particularly the whole Cotabato. Maguindanao are called people of the pain. Their political power diminished after long period of fighting and resisting colonialism and Christianization, particularly at the beginning of the 20th century. However, by 1970s, three-fourths of their homeland were lost to Filipino settlers, mostly Elongo and Cebuano. Third, we have the Iran. Iranon have inhabited the area bordering between Lanao del Sur and Maguindanao province. They were excellent in maritime activity and they used to ply the route connecting the Sulu area, Moro Gulf to Salabesi, and raided the Spanish held territories along the way. So, fourth, we have the Tausug. So, to, so, Professor Muhammad Nasser Matli argued that the term Taosog is a slang word and originated from the two words Tao, which means people, and Maisog, which means brave. Therefore, Taosog means brave people. So, before the coming of Islam, the Taosog had already established a central government. When Islam came, Taosog leaders accepted Islam. They did not resist. As soon as they became Muslims, they made themselves models of infusing Islamic values and politics to the government. 
So, fifth, we have the yakan. So, the term yakan is a mispronunciation of the word yakal by the Spani Spaniards while well, the term basilan has originated from two words, basi, which means iron, and balani, which means magnate. The culture of the yakans is similar to the Taosugs. Its inner foundation lies in the spirit of martabat. So, so the sixth one is the sama. The sama identity is derived from the term sama-sama, which means togetherness in English or collective effort. They are geographically diverse, diversified owing to their exposure to maritime activities and fishing. Helping each other is recognized as norm of the Sama people. So, we have here the Sangil. The Sangil came from Sahine, Sangihe, an archipelago sprawling the Celebes Sea just south of the Mindanao Sea. They also in evolved their own social organization associated with central leadership which enabled them to wage battle against Dutch and Spanish colonialism. They used to contribute war paras, fighters and arms in major expeditions to Spanish-held territories. So we have here the Kaagan. So it inhabited mostly the Davao areas, so Kaagan was mostly found in Davao areas. They became Muslims as a result of contact with the Magandanao Sultanate and later strengthened with the arrival of some Taoso groups who helped to organize the Kaagan society. So, we have here the Kulibugan. Kulib the term Kulibugan is a Sama word which means half bread. Originally, they are part of the Subanon ethnic group, an indigenous people inhabiting the interior of the Sambuanga Peninsula. So another we have here, the Palawan. Palawan, um, the early Muslim inhabitants in mainland Palawan were, were the Pan Panimusan. So Panimusan are those people who, um, who are the main... Uh, who are the early Muslim inhabitants in mainland Palawan. So, mainly Taosog during the Sultanate period came to Palawan in order to introduce Islam to the local people. The Muslim concentration is mostly in the southern part of Palawan such as Batarasa, Rizal, Quizon, Brooks Point, and Hispanola. So, lastly, we have here the Molbog. The Mulbug are mainly confined in the Balabak Islands located at the southern tip of Palawan. They received Islamic influence and later embraced Islam from Brunei Muslim missionaries. Then talking about the different Muslim ethnic groups. So let's proceed to another slide. We have here the Muslim legacy. So, the national identity of the Philippine Muslims was shaped by Islam and further developed in the course of their heroic struggle against Western colonialism. Right after the first encounter with foreign aggressors in 1570 in Manila, the Philippine Muslims won a distinct honor as Moro, an identity put forward by the aggressors after the Moors of Spain. They were called Moros only on account of their Islamic ideology and their culture being similar to the Moors who conquered Spain for 785 years. To the Spaniards, the term Moro would also mean Muslim. Muslim in this country have been identified in South, Southeast Asia and across the Muslim world as the Bangsa Moro people. This identity is officially recognized by the Organization of Islamic Countries. This is the reference by which the historians and government legislators 
recognized the official designation of the Muslims in the country and is now enshrined in the Muslim Organic Act of 1989. The history of the Bangsamoro people is no doubt ranked as the first line of historical development of the Philippines. The cohesiveness of the 11 Muslim groups under the spirit of Islamic Brotherhood is a living reality of Bangsamoro nationalism. So that's all for critical evaluation and promotion of local and oral history of the Philippines. So again, this is Nimosa Villarin saying, Soar high, CSUCC, and God bless us all. And that concludes our reporting. This has been Zali Sumalinog saying, Thank you so much for watching and Soar High Future Accountants.